Hey, what's up everyone? Today I want to show you the Sub-Zero Rogue 6 Baritone and I want to answer the question when it comes to extended range guitars. How long is too long? Let's find out. So I ordered this guitar a couple of weeks ago on gearformusic.com. I have to take a minute to rant about the package that it was in because it was the worst package ever. And it's a miracle that this guitar arrived in one piece. I don't know how, but it was essentially an outer box taped together from two pieces of cardboard, kind of. And inside of that was the cardboard guitar box, which was not closed, so you can basically just open it up inside of the non-padded outer box and it just was like flying around in that bigger box and there was a hole in one of the corners of that outer box you could literally reach into the package into the inner guitar box and just you could literally touch the guitar from the outside i i don't know how this arrived in one piece without a scratch without a ding but it's here <laughs> rant over i'm sorry now you see these popping up on the internet left and right people are using them for insanely low tunings they are modifying them they are very cheap guitars let's start with that this was 229 euros only as a new guitar i got the white one polar white there is also like a sunburst type of tobacco burst uh, type which looks much more old school i prefer this very clean modern look and also has the nickname the loathe caster because one of the guitarists of the band loathe uses one uh, in their music so i was curious how these guitars feel and i wanted to get one for myself <laughs> So let's start with the overall quality and feel of this. I must say I was quite surprised by how solid it feels. The finish is nice and flawless. The neck feels great, nicely sanded. If you run down your hand uh, alongside the frets, you can feel them a little bit. They're like teeny tiny, a bit pointy, but nothing major here, nothing that you can't fix with a little bit of sanding here around the frets. Fret leveling is nice. There is no obvious fret buzz. The nut is put nicely in place. Nothing on the headstock. There are no tool marks on the guitar. Now, I think for the price, it's very surprising, positively surprising, uh, how well this is put together. If we quickly go over the specs, it's an older body finished in polar white. There's this black pickguard. It's like, yeah, it's like jazz master shape. Master volume, master tone, a three-way switch here to Humbuckers, Tunematic Bridge, Reverse Headstock, which we are going to get to in a minute because it can cause some problems with finding the right strings. Uh, I think it's plastic nut, 22 frets, unfortunately, no 24 on this maple neck uh, and fretboard, which uh, has a like plastic, I think it's plastic, plastic binding with these plastic block inlays in black. Makes it feel a bit more boutique and not so raw, I really like that. Uh, it also goes around the headstock, as you can see. So far, I think, like, look-wise and aesthetic-wise, it's a very nice guitar. It's really cool that it has this 
rather old school shape, but it is a 30 inch scale length, which is enormous. Even for extended scale guitars, you could consider this as a bass six. <laughs> Now, the first problem that I had with this guitar when it arrived, it is supposed to have a 24 to 84 string set on there, which is pretty enormous. And somehow I did not get any kind of tuning with that tension of the strings because it was, for me at least, I found it impossible to find a balance between the upper and lower strings in any tuning. So either they were too floppy in the lows or just too stretched on the highs. The tension was never even at any standard or dropped tuning. So I could not I could not play the guitar in the first two weeks until I found a string set that I could fit on this because that's the second part of this. You cannot put any strings on here because the scale is so massive. You have to consider that the strings are running through the body up to the bridge, 30 inches along the scale length of the guitar to the nut, and from there another like 15 centimeters at least for the low string to the tuning peg, which is like, I mean, I mean, look at that distance. You can only put dedicated baritone strings on here. So you can either go custom or have a very, very limited selection of strings that you can put on here, which is why I've seen people modding this and they like they cut off the headstock and place the tuning peg for the lower um, string right here on the headstock, which looks very odd, but it's their way of fixing that they have to, you know, order custom strings for the guitar. That's the way to do it. I didn't want to like modify this headstock or whatever. So I got pretty much the only readily available string set for this, which is by Pyramid Strings. The 14 to 72, that is made specifically for the Gratch Baritone, which is like 29.7 inches. That is on here. And finally, the tuning is even. However, and there's the next point, I somehow don't get this guitar to a very low tuning for some reason, even though it's 30 inches. With the 72 right now, I am at F sharp which is not really that low, dude. You're like almost an octave below standard, but hear me out. I thought I could go down like E or something like that, or even further lower. I know the strings are not the thickest, but considering I also have a 72 gauge on my 27 inch baritone, which I have in G, so just a semitone above this, but there are three inches in between the scale length, it's kind of weird. I have the feeling that if you have a scale length that is like 30 inches long, it gets too long for proper tension because I feel that the strings are just, the strings just have too much travel to wobble around and I don't like the attack that you get with the right hand. So that is something you have to consider with this. It doesn't like feel like a guitar anymore for your right hand. Of course, it doesn't feel like a normal guitar for your left hand either because like the distances you have to stretch for like normal chords is also enormous. And you have to ask, is it worth it? I think to answer that question right away, for me, I think it's not. But I think at some point, the scale length of a baritone can be too long for the purpose of getting that low null. Speaking of the low null, Let's talk about the sound. These are, I think, Al Nico hamburgers. I don't know what the specs are exactly, but they are very, very dull and muddy sounding pickups. Oh my God. And they are not doing this guitar justice. The guitar has, it does have that 
low baritone null, but it's not being translated at all for these pickups. And generally, weirdly enough, these strings are fresh. However, the guitar acoustically sounds very dull. And I think it's just the way it's constructed. It's maybe the scale length, maybe the string thickness as well, but even the 72 is not that thick. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. So it's kind of uncomfortable to play. By the way, the neck is like, super massive. It is also linear in thickness. So it's 22 millimeters at the first fret and 22 millimeters at the 12th fret, sorry, down here. And if I compare this to my RG550 Ibanez with the Super Wizard, this is five millimeters thicker, half a centimeter thicker on the first fret than my Ibanez, which is, it's, it's pretty much a tree that you're playing on. And it doesn't make it much more comfortable. I wanted to get this and make it a project guitar, change the pickups, change the tuning pegs. I'm already at a point where I can feel that this guitar is not for me. It is not for me, the scale is too long and I don't see any benefit for me to create music with this because I can create the low stuff with my 27 inch scale baritone which sounds better and just you know is ergonomically much more efficient and just you know, better to use than this chunky mega thing here. As you can imagine, the balance is not that great as well. If you have it on your lap, you can see, like it is very neck heavy because the neck is just so thick and so massive and so heavy that yeah, you get pretty much a lot of neck dive. I think the center of gravity is more like here and not here where the guitar is sitting on your, on your leg. So much about all of this. This is not really a review video, but more like just me sharing my opinion and my thoughts about this guitar. And uh, this might help you choose whether or not you want to get one of these. It's, it's something different and you have to consider that. Although it's not very expensive, it's still 230 euros that you have to spend. I did not choose to send it back because I wanted to do this video and I wanted to still try and see how I can work with this over time, but I did not picked this up more than maybe two times during the last five weeks or so. It's not an inspiring tool for me. By the way, fun fact, forgot to tell you that, I had to drill out the ferrule here at the back because the string didn't go through and it was only a 72. So I don't know because probably the winding of the pyramid, but yeah, it was quite of a funny story. Oh, uh, by the way, the ferrules were not fixed in place. So when I removed the strings, they all fell out and I had to glue them in to make them stay. But yeah they're being pulled in by the strings now anyway. So yeah, I am not going to invest any more money into this. I'm not going to buy new pickups and uh, tuning machines because I just simply don't see the benefit for me. Even though, and don't get me wrong, so I want to conclude on that note, even though this guitar does have a lot of potential. So I can see, I can hear this sound pretty beastly with proper pickups, but just the way it feels, the way this chunky neck feels, it's okay, I get along with it. I have big hands, I have long fingers, but I just don't see the point for just F sharp. It doesn't make any sense for me. I think if you have to put on bigger strings on here, uh, you're very limited with your choice, it will just get even muddier uh, unless you change your pickups. And even then, I think acoustically, this guitar lacks kind of a brilliance to it. So yeah, these are my thoughts on the Sub-Zero Rogue 6. I hope that helps you decide whether you wanna get yourself one of these or not. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. It was a lot of blabbering, I'm sorry about that, but I hope you're enjoying 
the tunes in between like always. A big thanks goes out to my patrons who are supporting me and what I do here semi-professionally. Thanks for checking me out. Take a look at one of my other videos and I will see you very soon.